Alright, out here under the tarp in the wind, filling up my entire deck is a bunch of totes. I'll try to show you under here. Uh, we have totes and totes and totes stacked three high and two high and plastic totes and totes and all through here is uh, a lot of them are closed. There's some electronic stuff in there. There was uh, dishes. There's a miscellaneous everything. It's uh, about a household unit and it uh, pretty much took everything from the house. Luckily we, we did not get a refrigerator in it. We did end up with another uh, washer and dryer in this one. But we did also get a, uh, a Sony flat screen Bravia TV. So it's a 46 inch. Maybe that will help us recoup some of our money. One of the things they don't tell you when you buy storage units is about this pile that's out in the middle of the yard and that is all of the old mattresses that people leave in the storage units when you get the bed frames and all the dressers and all the other stuff which is really great. But you also have to haul off all the mattresses. We have from three units we have I believe six sets of mattresses and box springs. We were only able to reuse one set from the first unit that we bought because they're brand new still wrapped in their plastic. All the rest of them are older ones and I don't want to try and sell them even with the existing bed frames and bedroom sets that we have because I just think they're just gross and uh, nobody wants to sleep on somebody else's sweat. Uh, but if you do, hit me up. I will be more than happy to sell you these mattresses before I take them to the dump. Uh, a couple other things that uh, people haven't... Uh, said much about online when I watch all these videos and I watch a, a bunch of the the storage auction pirates and, and stuff like that and the uh, the Jeebus and uh, a lot of different people that do the storage unit buying and uh, as I covered in one of my videos uh, you know the costs are there the, uh, the eight, for our particular state 8% sales tax and then 15% on top of that for the auction because it's an online auction and then you have your uh, cleaning deposits that you know differ from unit to or from facility to facility the first unit we went place we went to was only twenty dollars as a clean out fee uh, but they only gave you 24 hours to clean out the unit after you won the auction uh, the second and third units were both at the same facility for me and it was a hundred dollar deposit which in most cases they'd want you to put down two hundred dollars because you have two units but I just uh, I talked with the manager and a lot of these storage uh, places are really cool and uh, this particular guy at this uh, prime storage out here in Columbia Sparkleberry was uh, awesome he uh, let me clean out one unit for the hundred dollar deposit he came he, we swept it out he checked it and then he just put the money over onto our second unit we did the same thing over there uh, we had minor amounts of trash, a, a couple of, like a small shelving unit that broke that we wanted to throw away. Uh, he allowed us to do that. Uh, we also had uh, uh, the need of a couple of tools to try and uh, disassemble a few things. He loaned us uh, some tools. Uh, he came by and checked on me and my wife as we were loading up the U-Haul. Uh, brought us a couple of bottles of water. Awesome, awesome guy. And, uh, you know, just want to give him a shout out if he ever does watch these videos or somebody does and uh, uh, can relate that to him. Great facility uh, manager. Uh, another thing that I wanted to cover on buying storage units that a lot of people aren't aware of. When you buy a storage unit and you want to sell your merchandise to try and make money, uh, there's several different ways. A lot of people have stores. A lot of people do flea markets. Then there's other people that do like I'm doing right now. I have some uh, higher value items and smaller items I'm posting on eBay. And then I have some other additional items uh, beyond that that I'm doing on local like Facebook uh, uh, shopping, I guess shopping channels, pages, something like that. And uh, like marketplace and things like that. Uh, one of the things that's good and bad about that is once you post an item, they will people will message you to try and get the item, which is good. Uh, 
about 50% of the time, the people will look at the picture and the price, message you, and right away try and talk you down to half the price of what you posted, or I've had people, I've posted some stuff for $150 for this uh, stereo thing, and I've had people want it for 50 bucks. And this thing brand new is $600, and they're trying to get it for 50 bucks. So, you know, I'm just polite about it, and I just tell them sorry, but no. Uh, I had a couple people that kept pushing and pushing, and I, you know, every time they would push with their price, I would just go up on my price. So uh, they finally stopped, uh, you know, messaging me. Uh, again, uh, people do, they message you all the time. Uh, anytime you log into Facebook and they see you're online, the messages start flying in for items and they want to come view the item. They want to, they want to know if you deliver. Um, it's, uh, <clears throat> it can be a headache. Uh, can be a little stressful trying to deal with all of it at once. That's why we're only posting, you know, five to ten items at a time. That's a manageable amount of things that we can keep track of and that I can have actual access to because I've buried, you know, a lot of stuff in some of my storage rooms. Uh, I've had people messaging me all the way up till like 10, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, I just finally just stopped, you know, checking the message thing on my phone. Um, because it's just not worth it to have the headaches that late at night. Uh, we also put in that we don't want to do any sales on Sundays because we spend a lot of time doing uh, some church activities, but we still have people that apparently can't read and will message us even while we're in church trying to message me. Luckily I have my phone on vibrate, but there was 15 messages that came across when I'm at church. So, you know, I'm like, I'm in church, you should be too, stop messaging me. Uh, but that's just uh, another small thing that you have to be concerned with if you want to try and get into this storage auction game. Got to be thick skinned as well, uh, because a lot of people are going to tell you that you're charging too much for something. Some people are going to be, you know, always wanting to talk you down to try and get something for nothing. Um, my answer to that would be, you know, pretty much stick to your guns. If you know what the value is of something, and you know that what the value is and what your price is is you know is a good price to sell it quick instead of uh, you know buying it new then <clears throat> you're gonna find the right person eventually and just hold out for that you know don't sell it to the first person that comes along you know wait for your price and uh, for your right person uh, that's the best advice I can give you right now just from my short experience doing that uh, Hopefully this helps some people. Uh, as I get more stuff uh, posted up, I'll hopefully make another video with some more quick posts of some things. But uh, until then, talk to you later.